Welcome to the Hemp Del Soul Podcast. All health, no high. Here's your host, Mary Lisa Lawless. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Hemp Del Soul Podcast. Co host here, Jeremy Wolf, joined by your host, Mary Lisa Lawless. Mary Lisa. I say this all the time, and I will say it again. It's always a pleasure being in your company. I, I just enjoy being with you. You have a good energy yourself, you know, and it's not just about the company. It's about what we put out to the world. So absolutely grateful to be here with you. Yes, indeed. And speaking of energy, that's the topic of conversation for today. Healing awesome. and energy, something that I say this all the time on the north side of 40. Up, up recently, I really got into this whole space and it's been fascinating my personal journey of growth and personal development has been has been real. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about energy healing. And I know you mentioned you've been listening to Joe Dispenza a lot. So let's get into this. Set the stage for us. And I know this is what you do, right? With Hemp Del Sol, Crystals Del Sol, the Transformation Project. It is all about using your... your basically using the tools we have available, right? Using our own body, like we are the medicine, right? What can we do within ourselves to uh, be better, live a good life and, and put good energy out there and attract the things we want in our life. So set the stage for us. What do you got on your mind? So, so where I am in my life is that I understand, because I guess if you're on the north side of 40, I'm on the south side of 70. <laughs> I'm 62, so you know. Um, Looking good, I might, I might add. Thank you very much. Um, as I move through my life, I look at how the energy of the people around me has impacted me in a positive or negative way, and that the people I choose to have in my life on a personal level, I, I really we talk about things about how we actually feel and the things we pick up from each other, what we sense from each other. And in my professional world, I realized that I've done a lot of training in energy healing. So I've been exposed to Reiki for 30 years now. And Reiki is a Japanese form of energy healing. And we actually have a uh, energy. We have a Reiki circle here twice a month now. You need to send me information about when you have that because I've I've heard all sorts of things about Reiki healing. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that I've ever been involved with that, and that's something that yeah. I do want to explore. So please don't forget send me over some information. Absolutely, I will. And that. generally, and we'll we have it in the in the office because we do have a large space. So we have a circle and we have that on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month for the month of June. We're switching it up just to the first and the fourth because um, I'll be away. And the person who does it normally on the second, it's her birthday. <laughs> so she's not going to be here on the 13th. So we're doing it June 6th and then we'll do it again on the fourth Thursday. Um, seating's limited. So we do tell people to reach out to us to uh, reserve a seat. What does that what does that look like? And I, I'm going to experience, but what okay. is what is one to expect? That I think I say this all the time, right? Like for the most of the masses out there, they hear a term like Reiki healing, and immediately it's like that woo-woo, the, the <laughs> woo-woo knee-jerk reaction comes up. It's like, oh, what is that? Like energy healing? Yeah. But it's it's well, like a, a woo-woo. Real... But I think most people have that misconception about it. It's like yeah. what what is one to expect if they came into a Reiki circle? What does that look like? What does that encompass? The room is set up. There's eight chairs maximum. The person who is performing the Reiki is on the outside of this circle and she'll walk around. She asks for permission to touch ahead of time. She usually will have incense, not incense, but um, essential oils like lavender and things like that um, in the room. The lighting is low. It's a very calm experience physically. And what they, she tells you not to expect anything. Yeah. Don't don't have expectations. Just allow to come whatever comes. And so she'll move around behind each person. And every single person, she'll say something. She'll, you know, give you a hug. She'll touch you. She'll, you know, just 
doing different parts of the body and how we heal. Um, she's really fine tuned or in tune with other people's energy. So it's sort of a sampling of a Reiki session because she does do individual sessions here, um, you know, private sessions. Um, this is a way to be exposed to what energy healing looks like and feels like everyone has a different experience and yet there's not been one person in the months that we've been doing this we've been doing it since february no one has said oh that sucked <laughs> i was like wow that was really interesting um the things you said were spot on the emotions that i felt were incredible so i i haven't had anybody have a, any kind of a negative response on any level the thing to know is that in Japan, this is part of medical school training because they understand that in order to heal the body, you need to heal the energy that's attached to the body. So everything is about mind and body, soul, mm -hmm. spirit. It's yeah. all connected. We're all connected. So when we move into like Joe Dispenza and we start looking at what people like people do in this country, well, actually he's all over the world. Um, and how they offer healing, how he offers healing. And it's generally through meditation. Everything yep. is about meditation and mindfulness and changing the internal dialogue. There's so many different components. Uh, I've got a lot going on in my head right now. Like <laughs> one of the books I'm reading is called The Untethered Soul. And it is about how we rent space in our head to our own mind and our own conversation and how that conversation will flip a switch on us and we can go from being pro to con in like three seconds flat depending on the subject oh and yeah how reactive we are and how much we actually listen to that voice so following up with going back to like bruce um, lipton and his stuff he's a molecular biologist who's done a lot on his book is the biology of belief that was his first book and it was about changing our bodies on a cellular level based on the way we think. What, what do we believe to be true? Mm. Yeah. So there's always a fact in a situation. And yet everything around it is perception. So the perceptions are always different. There's nothing that's really the same in how two people respond to a particular situation. I don't know whether that makes sense or not, but that is about the energy. So Joe Dispenza will talk about how it's the things we think that affect the outcome of anything and that being stuck with historical stuff, trauma, uh, things that have happened in our lives, the things we tell ourselves, the things we believe about ourselves, they all have an impact on our daily life. So I much just, of it, so much of an impact. Like, I just, one, of the, one of the things I noticed was the stories I had been telling myself for so long. And I, I talked to you about this with my creativity with my music and, and writing poetry and things like that. I, I told myself this story forever that I just, I'm not good enough. Like I, maybe I just don't have no rhythm. I, I, yeah, technically I can play the guitar, but yeah, that's as far as I'll go with it. Right. And the more you tell yourself that story, you limit the belief of what's possible. And the more Correct. you let your guard down and start to just truly not give a shit about expectations yeah. or what people think yeah. or the outcome, well then all of a sudden, Genius starts coming out. Well, I say genius, but yes, it, it really it, it, like your stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, and it, and, and it feeds on itself. So yeah. the more you let go and the more you let your guard down, the better it starts to sound, and the better it starts to sound, the better, the more confident you get, the more confident mm -hmm. you get, the better. And just again, it's like a, a an endless loop of greatness, and it's just absolutely mesmerizing to me how so many people live their life without tapping into their true potential for fear of what others think or fear yes. of failure or whatever it is. And I lived that way for so long and I still have, you know, we're all human beings and we all have that to some degree, you know, the trick is to identify that when it happens and then going back to meditation, right? Just Correct. recognize it for what it is. I, I like to thank it. If I get some kind of negative anxiety or thought that comes up, it's like, oh, interesting. Why are you asking questions, right? Your anxiety comes up. Why, why did you pop into the, the system? Here? And you mm -hmm. kind of have a little dialogue with that and you watch it just dissipate. It goes away <laughs> and you realize how silly it is. You're like, oh, okay. Or you can get caught up in it and let it ruin your whole day 
over yes, some silly exactly. interaction that you had with some external thing that you have no control over. No, and that and that's true. Because the reality is, is we have control always over our reaction to those external things. And that's it. You know, but one of the that, things that I was listening to this morning was, you know, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, why? Okay, a react, you know, you could react to it, but why? What what purpose does it serve for you to react to it except to say, oh, okay, somebody just, you know, switched lanes in front of me. Yeah. Nothing bad happened. No accident occurred. No, it was just something that shifted our focus. It's like a knee jerk reaction too. When yeah. somebody, if somebody cuts you off, you, something there's a deep psychological impulse to want to lash out, right? You have to catch yourself because it's yeah. overwhelming mm -hmm. and you have to just recognize that one of the things that I do is I just try to come from a place of compassion and understanding and just realize that everybody is operating in this world. Everybody is going through their own challenges. You don't know what's going on in their world. And most of the time when somebody cuts you off, it's not intentional. It's just because they didn't see you. It's not like they're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to really ruin this person's day and cut them off. Most people aren't thinking about it. It's just, a, it's just a silly mistake. And then again, we allow it to consume us and get angry and, and we're only hurting ourselves. And, put, and we're yeah. also putting out a bad energy there. Then the next interaction you have with somebody, what are you saying? Like, oh, I was just driving and some idiot cut me off and now you're giving that to somebody else. Like, it's so useless. Yeah, you're paying it forward. <laughs> well, and that's the whole thing. You're paying it forward. You're paying the angry part forward instead of the loving, peaceful part and saying we're all doing the best we can. Yep. everybody's doing the best they can. There's, there's, you know, regardless of our perception of what they think is their best, it, we all, we all are, we're all doing the best we can. So looking at energy, looking at how our internal dialogue, looking at what we're capable of doing on a biological level to heal our own bodies, to heal our own minds, it, it's all connected. I just did um, a podcast with another young woman, Rylan, who does this healthy podcast. She does it herself. She does everything. She sets it all up, Rylan Rosano. And it's the second podcast that I've done with her. And we did one this week on trauma and how to help with healing trauma. And she puts it on social media and she's got a following. But she's 17 years old and she graduated from high school. And I think she's in her third year already at Nova University. And she's 17. Talking about trauma and healing at 17. Goodness. She's amazing. And she has some medical stuff going on. But just to, to watch her, she thinks I'm amazing. I think she's amazing at 17 <laughs> to be doing everything that she's doing. Um, you know, and she's got her own health issues. She's got her own things. But she she just keeps going. Um, so I've done two uh, two podcasts with her. I think the first one we did was like an hour and a half long. Um Bit, a bit long, but it was good. And it was really beautiful. And she, again, she's searching for answers and wants to help people figure this out. You know, and the reason that I got into any of this to begin with was because of the my own trauma and how I healed and how I got through all of that. Because it, it's, I mean, I started, I didn't start the field until the late 80s. You know, up to up till then, I had been in therapy, I had done work, I had done all that, but there was still something missing. But I had enough to start giving back. And that's sort of how I moved into this field in general was I, I was grateful enough with the progress that I had made in my life and felt settled enough in my life to go to graduate school, to become a psychotherapist, to be able to specialize in trauma, to be able to bring as many people out of the trenches as I could. My sister, my mom, and I, we all did it together. We were in different at different levels, but we ended up opening the practice together. I mean, there's so many things that are connected to, um, at its base, a level of gratitude. Yeah. So being grateful for so so all of powerful. my life experiences and the healing work that I've done and continue to do and give back is truly one of the best things that I do in my life. I really do love being helpful. And for me, being kind, being loving, you know, I'm not perfect, but that's at my core. That's what I want to be is loving and kind in every situation. It doesn't mean I don't get frustrated with some of the corporate stuff, you know, like dealing with companies that have issues with CBD and hemp-based products and 
it's, you know, dealing with, it's a supplement. It's not a drug. <laughs> and supplements help people. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how much red tape there is in your industry and CBDs with, with the cannabis industry so prevalent and becoming legal everywhere. You would think that with that happening, the, the regulation around CBD anyway would, would, would be a little bit more yeah. lax. But it seems like you deal with so much red tape with everything from running ads on Facebook to you were just talking about with your payment processing. Like everything you do is scrutinized with a fine tooth, tooth comb because you're selling CBDs, which are like not... Hemp yeah, no, not even, it's hemp based. It's not, it's it's not, not even hemp. marijuana. It's hemp. It's it, so yes, but it, it's. I have to see that some of the stuff, the roadblocks that get put there, they're there to teach me something. I was just going to say I, yes. It, it, everything is a lesson for me, and what do I need to learn, and how do I need to move forward? So moving back into energy healing, looking at so Qigong, it's a Jap Chinese energy healing. Then we also have, I mean, think about what we have in this, in this country. I mean, in the store, in the office here, I have a medium that works here. And he was funny. I was asking him one day, well, what's the difference between somebody that's a psychic and somebody that's a medium? And he said, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. And if you're a medium, you're talking to dead people. <laughs> I was like, okay. He says, they have to be dead. <laughs> You're just being a psychic. You're not being a medium. He made me laugh. But Maurice Israel, he's an amazing, intuitive, healing presence in my life and now in business. And he's a medium and he's done the medical mediumship. He started out as a Reiki master many, many years ago. He's a hospice nurse. I mean, he stays connected to that, that fine line and then the other side. And I've had so many hospice nurses tell me, oh, yeah, all the spirits are here. We don't tell the families because we don't want to freak them out. Um, and they're not there to take somebody. They're there to make life easier, to make the transition easier. They can stay or if they don't heal and they're ready to move on to the energy world or the spirit world, they do. So there are so many different components to healing with energy that it's it's. It comes down to find what it is you're comfortable with. And if you're uncomfortable, what are you willing to step into for healing? Like you like the ice baths. The idea of stepping into an ice bath is like, there's no way. <laughs> I don't oh, even there, like there, There's I don't a way. Like showers. We, will, we will get you in <laughs> to the ice bath. My, you and my wife both. Yeah. She's, she won't go in, but we'll, we'll get you We'll get you both in at some point. I've done the cryotherapy, you know, and that kind of stuff. And it's, it's interesting, but it's not my entire body in an ice bath. I just watched an episode or rewatched an episode of Ted Lasso where the Roy Kent character is sitting in a, a trash can that's filled with ice and water in like their training room and he's just sitting there and he goes underwater and he's just sitting there in an ice bath. Mm -hmm. um, the best. You know, and, and we know it helps with inflammation, but we also know that you can have a heart attack doing it. People have died doing ice baths. Yeah. If you have an underlying <laughs> heart condition, you might want to check into that. You if, you have a, if you have a strong and healthy heart and you're active and you do exercise, you ain't going to have a problem if you go on the ice yeah. bath. But yeah, if you have like but a, it, it is, it's, it's for any kind of the healing modalities do your research. At the end of the day, there is enough research out there moving away from traditional science held beliefs about earth and ground. And it has to be, you know, tangible in order for it to be real and moving into this quantum field of energy and understanding that we are all energy. We all bring something to a room we bring something to our family. We bring something to our lives just by the energy that we put out. You know, if your pops walks into the room and he's angry, everybody knows it. Everybody, everybody <laughs> he doesn't feels have to it. Say you can a feel word. It. Everybody feels it. Yeah. And if somebody walks in and they're silly and goofy and giggly, you can't help but laugh and giggle. Yes, you know, does. and people do silly things and sometimes it just cracks us up. And, you know, if we can find more things to just bring joy into our life, oh, the world would be such a nicer place.
right? It's like, I don't watch the news. I'll scan headlines, but in general, I won't watch the news because everything is sensationalized. Everything is negative. There's no more stories in the news about cow tipping. There's no more <laughs> stories in the news about the traffic light that was out and, you know, helping the little old lady get across the street or, you know, I, I mean, there's no more little heartfelt, just loving, warm stories in the news anymore. And searching for that. You know, I have a song that I listen to almost every morning. And it's Michael Franti, Michael Franti and Spearhead. It's I listen to It's a Good Day for a Good Day. Mm. Today is a don't, good day. Don't know day. the song, but I'm going to check it out. A oh, good yes. Day, a good it's day, a good for, day a for a good day. Good I day. love that song. And I will, Sorry. when I'm with my grandchildren, I'll grab my grandchildren and we'll, we'll spin around the room just like my mom did with my son. Putting music on and dancing and just being playful. It's, and at the end of the day, if we just focus on our own energy, and that's where meditation comes in. I'm actually headed to a, a retreat out in Colorado at the uh, Rocky Mountain Eco Dharma. Another silent, silent retreat? Absolutely. Silence up in Oof. Rocky Mountains. I oh, cannot be beautiful. wait. But this <laughs> is also along the lines of what Joe Dispenza does. It's they, We all know in this field, we know that energy comes with being able to sit still long enough to know what's going on in our own head and changing our dialogue. Mm -hmm. So when I was listening the book, The Untethered Soul, I'm listening to it and it's cracking me up because I got it. I know how my brain will switch sides. It'll play both sides. It'll, you know, it'll flip a switch whenever. And if I need to get angry, I will. If I want to be happy, I will. Um, but the opinions and the, the voice that's nonstop. So some people may not think the book is funny, but I think it's really funny because of just, it's like, yeah, I know, I know that story. <laughs> I know that story. And um, so yeah. if each of us as individuals can just bring a little more kindness to the world, I think we're all going to be in a much, much better place and that our lives are going to move more smoothly you know, that feeling of abundance isn't just about financial abundance. It's also about emotional abundance. Do I have enough to keep giving to everybody that I love, everybody that I want in my life? And it, it's so easy. Yeah. It really is easy to just give that. I don't have to give financially. I can give time. I can just give and make space for people in my life. So having an abundance of love and kindness, there's nothing like it. It's the way to go. Yeah. And I tell my kids all the time because they get stuck in their emotions like everybody does. Yeah. I tell them life is so much better when you just let things brush off of you and you don't get consumed with anger. You don't get consumed with hate and jealousy and you just, and you're just try to be happy all the time and everything just seems to work itself out. But I, I want to dig in a little bit further what you said, because this is something that I struggle with tremendously in my life. And I'm thinking that maybe you could offer some wisdom here, uh, having a few more years on me and being really deep in this space. You mentioned the retreat, right? You go away for eight days in silence. Yep. I've been on many retreats. Right? I do a lot of plant medicine and, and other things that I work on. And one of the things that I struggle with, and I think this <laughs> partially has to do with the society that we live in. Western society is very status-driven, success-driven, abundance, instant gratification. So every time I go away and I unplug and then I come back into society, it's like I'm hit, hit by a ton of bricks. And it's very difficult to integrate what I've learned through those experiences into the day-to-day -day life. It gets better and I realize it's a process, but I often find myself you know, a week out of the retreat or whatever it is, I'm okay, I'm okay. But then slowly I start to get sucked. I feel like I'm being sucked into the dark side of, of Western society. And I, I met my, um, I met up with my cousin. I hadn't seen him in a while and he lives, he splits, he's married a, a lovely Japanese lady and they have a child and they split time between Japan and the U S yeah. and he's on his way back. He's actually leaving tomorrow back to Japan. And he was talking about just how much better it is how much how much more he enjoys living over there than he does here because of the culture over there. And you mentioned you mentioned Japan earlier and, and, and Reiki and these types of practices. Those are integral with society there. And uh -huh. people are just night. He said people are just more courteous. You know, the people are more laid back. He lives in Okinawa. 
He said, it's yeah. like, it's just so everything he said about that was like, I want to go there, but I'm not there. I'm here. Right. So what, what do I do or what does somebody do in their daily life to kind of walk that line, right? Between being uh -huh. productive and being successful and building wealth for your family and, and doing all those things that are important, but also live from a place of patience, understanding, being laid back, abundance, all this. Because there is a there is a razor. I, I heard Joe Dispenza say this. It's a razor's edge between being a bum and not doing anything and just, oh, I manifest everything, but I don't do anything. And actually being so productive that you're burning your life up with stress and anxiety. You have to find a balance. How do you do that plugged into the society? It, it is about what is your routine when you're alone? What do you do to take care of yourself? So what I try to do is that I try to do a minimum of, I do silence in the morning. So I'll do, and I, and I may not be sitting like Joe Dispenza says, there's benefit to walking meditation. And yep. when I'm out doing my silent retreat, that will be one of the things that we do. It's a, it's a walking meditation. It's sitting meditation. It's laying meditation. It's standing meditation. It is about being connected. So what I do for myself to stay grounded and to not get tied up into the insanity on a regular basis, or at least it, it, you get tied up into it, but how quickly can I remove it? How quickly can I let it go? So that time with practice gets less and less. So one of the, the things that I do every morning is that I go out back barefoot and get in the grass. I have all these trees in my backyard now and I've got guava. <clears throat> And they put fruit boxes around them, like the ones that the strawberries come in. So when the fruit is coming to keep the iguanas and the squirrels and everybody else, the birds from eating my guava, I put boxes on them. I'll have to send you the picture. I took a picture to send <laughs> my sisters. I also have two avocado trees that have are bearing fruit for the first time this year. And they're things, everything in my yard was planted from a seed. It was something that came into my house that I bought, I ate and threw in the dirt. So I now have these two avocado trees in the background or in the back. I've got a couple mango trees in the backyard. Uh, and then I have other trees that aren't bearing fruit yet, like my may and other things. But I physically go stand in the grass. And today I just stood in the grass and looked at the trees. That's all I did. I just looked up and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. There's actually an avocado on this little tree that I planted. And, oh, man, those mangoes are getting really big. I'm grounding because I'm just noticing what is. I'm physically standing in dirt, grass, trying to you know, avoid dog poop that I haven't found yet. Um, I know, I pick that up every morning. But actually just noticing what I have in my life to be grateful for, for this minute, keeps me out of that fray. Yeah. And there's nothing like it. And then at night to be able to just do, did I do my best? What do I need to do to let go of what I didn't do right or what I didn't do well? So it really is about checking in with myself in the morning and checking in with myself at night. And often that helps me to just stay balanced. So when I come back from one of these retreats, there is an integration period. Because going from the silence to like the busyness of a, of insanity, which is what happened last year when I went with big uh, out to Big Bear in California, there was a hurricane that came through California the first time in a hundred years. Um, and yeah, right, you, you leave, you leave Florida to go somewhere, and all, of all things, a hurricane <laughs> comes. A hurricane. Right? At least I knew what to do. <laughs> I knew how to handle prepared. it while other people were freaking you're out. You're a you're a seasoned veteran when it comes to seasoned her. veteran, yeah, a South Florida resident. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was a hard entry back into a week of silence, doing evacuation planning. And how are we getting here? And I was like, whew, that was a bit rough. So I planned an extra two days in Colorado for my reentry. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't have a plan. I just know I'm going to be there an extra two days. <laughs> so just slowly moving back into things. So when you come back from retreat, giving yourself an opportunity to be quiet. Some people it helps to journal. Some people it helps to exercise. But I find it most helpful for me to just be quiet 
and stand in the grass. Stand in the sand if you're on the beach. Stand in the grass, stand in the mud. Just physically get to the earth. The earth has its own vibration. And trying to create that balance back. Somebody just sent me something yesterday. A friend of mine sent me um, Earthing. I think that's what it's called. I haven't looked at it. It's a movie. And um, it's this guy who does nothing but grounding. Hmm. And what do we do to stay grounding? Or to stay grounded? And it's, it's that kind of stuff. What do we need to do to pay attention to what it is that's going on inside and saying, baby girl, it's okay. You're going to have a good day mm. and you'll get through this. And being able to just say that to yourself, you know, to say, hey, little boy, we're going to be, we're, we're good. Because that fear that gets struck up on us, that's our, like what we call inner child stuff. It's old stuff from when we were kids and didn't feel, didn't feel heard, accepted, loved, whatever. So being able to just take time every day, that's how you do the re reintegration process in a healthier way. Because you don't want to come back and get into drinking or smoking or, you know, partying or any of that. And you don't want to just jump back into the, the every day, what we have to get done every single day. It's take time to know that those things will get done and it'll be easier to do them if we're also taking care of ourselves first. So much easier. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah. So for, for me, I've been running a lot and okay. sometimes I'll, I'll put on Joe Dispenza and run. And I remember when I started listening to him, a lot of it didn't resonate. So it's just like when you talk to kids and they're not really hearing what you're saying because it goes in, in one ear out the other you're not really paying attention I remember listening to joe dispenza when i hadn't implemented a lot of these practices in my life but as i started to implement some of these things that he talks about and started to actually re reprogram my mind i started to notice things appear he talks a lot about um, when, when you start to what's the word i'm looking for i don't want to say manifest when you start to kind of create your own reality with your thoughts uh, things start to show up in your life. He calls them, I think he called them like breadcrumbs from the divine or something or little, little serendipities, <laughs> right? Little thing, little coincidences that pop mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, wow, isn't that crazy how that just landed on my door, which kind of like always yeah. there, but we're just not yes. training our attention on them. We're focused right. on too often the negative things. And, and, and that's what you see when you're focused on it. And I, I, I've had these moments where I've been running and he's been talking on a podcast or whatever it is. And he'll say something and it just hits me so hard that I get that glow in my body, the warm and fuzzy glow. I'm like, oh, my God, like, wow, how powerful that is. And, and you get that feeling and mm -hmm. you're like, OK, like, mm -hmm. this is real. Like, this is real shit. This yeah. is powerful. And you're like, I get this. Like, this is actually works. And yes. it just feeds itself. And then that un unlocks. And then later on, I'm sitting there playing the guitar. And it's like, all of a sudden, something comes to me. And I call them downloads <laughs> from the divine. I call them div divine downloads. So the creativity just yeah. flows the more you open up your and tune into it, everything. Yep, absolutely. I from And for me, when I know that I'm on track with whatever I'm doing, saying, thinking, behaving, whatever, it's like a goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I actually get the chills from head to toe. And I'm like, all right, I'm on target. You know, I, things are going in the way that I want them to go. And I'm actually focused on making things go the way that I want them to go because I'm not, um, I'm not stuck on the outcome. Yeah. So I'm looking at what I can do to just be present in my life and bring more positive into my life. Yeah. So the stuff with processing, it's going to work its way out. The stuff with, you know, the, the products that'll work its way out. The, the clients that I want to attract in my life, it's happening. It's already happening. The things that I want to do, you know, I had the mayor text me this morning and say, I have a client for you. I have a customer who wants to get some things from you. Reach out to her. I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's a function of you doing what you do, right? You're very present in the community. Right. Absolutely. You put, out, you put out that great energy. You're always positive. And then mm -hmm. these things just show up at your door. Yeah. I, I want to talk real quickly about the flow state, right? The, the elusive flow. State. I actually wrote this little, little poem the other day. Oh, cool. Tell That's yourself cool. this story. Now elusive flow state has been found tune my soul with existence 
my only goal is no resistance. Wow, I love it. So it. It, it's so elusive, right? The flow state they're talking about. But, but when you get into that groove, and I, I notice it the most when I play music and when I'm when I'm really plugged into that. And it's almost like a different person arrives. It's like it, it, it's, it's automatic. And it's your it's joyful political. self. It's your yeah, joyful and, self. But it's it, it is so elusive. Sometimes I'll sit down with the guitar, I'll start playing, and I feel like, well, man, I like, man, I really suck today. Like, what am I doing? How do I get into that state? Right. And like it's one of those things that you just have to do the work. You just have to be present. You have to whatever that practice looks like for you, whether it's meditation, whether it's exercise. If you do these things consistently, you start to program your mind in a way that starts serving you and what you want to do. Whereas if you yeah. don't create these habits, you know, cause we don't, we don't really have control over what we do. I mean, it's almost an illusion. The idea of free will, like every, everything we're doing, all these reactions, everything that we're, the way we're operating a world is basically the programs that are running behind the scenes. That's like, right. how do we refine those programs in the way that best serves us and our life and what we want to do. Uh -huh. And I think the more you do that, you start tapping into that flow state more and more and more. Uh, and it becomes less and less elusive. But it's been very elusive for me, as I'm sure it has been with most people throughout my life. But I am tapping into it more and more now, which and is cool. That's awesome. And I find that most men in their 40s are ready because they've already they, they've been working on the career. They've been working on the family and they're finally working on themselves. Women yep. probably feel it at a younger age because they have had more responsibilities on one level or another for the family. And it's it just is an amazing experience when you let yourself actually start to feel. And it's being connected to how you feel that brings more of the emotional side of life. People have a tendency to want to avoid sadness, but if you avoid the sad things in your life and you don't allow yourself to just, just have a feeling, don't make a big deal about it. It's like, well, I feel sad right now, I want to cry with that brings joy because it, everything is a give and take. Everything is a balance. Everything is the yin yang. It's all these things. How do you bring more joy into your life? Pay attention to those moments when you feel sad. Notice yeah. the things that make you angry and what do you need to do to let it go? Most anger is struck by fear. So pay attention to the times when you feel afraid and say, Oh, I'm afraid. Why am I afraid? Yep. I'm safe. I'm safe. I can let this go. The quicker you can address the physical or the emotional responses that you're having, the more joy you're going to have in your life. The more you practice being kind, being loving, the more joy you're going to have in your life. It does not mean that you don't experience sad things or that you don't get angry sometimes. You're not just this emotional mush where you don't feel anything. No. It opens up this broad spectrum of who we were as babies. We came into this world having all of our feelings and we learned to stop having them. So as we move forward in our adult lives, we realize, hmm, something's missing. How do we bring it back? This is how we bring it back. Give yourself 10 minutes in the dirt every day. Give yourself, whether it's in a garden, whether it's in the grass, whether it's putting boxes on a guava. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> do something in nature. I go outside of this office and I stand and I just stare at the sun every day. I do it every day between sessions, between when I have a minute, when I'm feeling stressed, I'll go sit with the crystals or I'll go outside and just, and the sun, just letting the sun shine on my face. It's not about getting a tan. It's just about being grateful that I can actually still see the sun and I can feel it and it's, it's about life. You know, this yeah. is all, how do we bring more joy? How do we bring more healing? How do we bring more energy into our lives that are positive? We are it. Change the way we think and we change the way we feel. We are the medicine. We absolutely are the medicine. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Unless there's okay. anything else you want to share. I think that's a good way to close up here. This has okay. been a very constructive and useful conversation. And I am so excited to continue this journey and continue to implement these practices and spread the message and, and try to do my best to 
live a good life and help others and put a good vibe out into the universe. Right. Yeah. Here's and another I appreciate one. You. Yep. I appreciate you, Jeremy. Here's another one for you. High vibration, feel the flow. Expectations, let them go. Step aside and clear the way. Embark upon a brighter day. Woo. Awesome. <laughs> love it. Love it. Get All right. Stuff out there. Continue. The to trend. be continued. Yes. Absolutely. All right, Mary Lisa, have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And we will catch you all in the next episode of the Hempdale Soul Podcast. Everyone take care. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Hemp Dell Soul Podcast. Explore our wide range of organic products at hempdellsoul.com. That's H E M P D E L S O U L.com or contact 954 854 1039.